I, uh, I've tested the, uh, a couple of different um, thermostats. And uh, regardless, I mean, I think this, this was the greatest idea. And, uh, and that is to have installed a Champion three, three row aluminum radiator. Yesterday, as I was testing uh, different thermostats, decided by the way to go with a uh, stick to the 180. Um, the, the car had been idling for about, I don't know, maybe altogether 18 minutes. So thermostat had opened, you could feel the, the flow. And this tank here, the, uh, the inlet was hot. I mean, it was, it would burn your, your fingers if you touch it for, for too long. I mean, it was, it was really hot. I didn't use the, uh, the laser temp gauge to, um, determine what the temperature was, but trust me, it was hot. So I came to this other side, this is the, uh, the inlet, and uh, it was barely lukewarm. So this thing really dissipates heat, as you know, and I'm not experienced about radiators or anything like that, but uh, you could tell the difference. And this is again, uh, just idling here in the garage. The, um, it looks fantastic. You can barely tell there's aluminum veins back there. And of course, if you've been following the series, I uh, painted the, the top portion, which was, I think, a great idea. I do not mind, actually, I like the, uh, love the welds around the, uh, the tanks. They look fantastic. I also plugged the, uh, the automatic transmission ports that I'm not using, just because I don't want any crap to get in there or bugs or anything like that. But uh, yeah, this is this has been amazing. I I love the and I and I highly recommend the uh, and from my experience, of course, I only know the Champion three row radiator is not expensive. It was about two two forty to fifty, and uh, yeah, it was it's worth the uh, the money definitely. I know there's better. I don't know what that means really. Uh, aluminum radiators out there, but uh, this one for the for the value is is really really good so far anyway uh, I also detailed the horns replaced all the vacuum hoses in here because this was the time to do it I repainted and uh, somewhat insulated with the uh, duplicolor the um, truck bed liner thing I brushed it on and I did as much as I could and for that I removed the the, um, the um, actuator cans all the wiring came came off again, and uh, I really detailed as much as I could. Took those relays out, and they look beautiful now. Not that you'll ever see them, but uh, same thing with the horns. I mean, they're not perfect, but uh, they look great. So I have the hood ready, and I'm I'm really digging this um, this liner from Fat Mat. I hope it's going to perform well. It should. It's pretty thick. At, Three quarters of an inch. Uh, I'm still on the fence about the adhesive they use, but um, it's self-adhesive, so that is a plus. And like I mentioned in the, the video where I covered the installation, it's a pain in the ass to install. I mean, it's not easy. And uh, of course, I work alone, so I don't know if that has anything to do with anything. But anyway, um, so yeah, so far this is running great. About 210, and this at idle again here in the garage for a good 15 minutes. It was 210 and, uh, and, that's, and that's it as far as the, uh, how hot it got. So it, it never got past that really. I mean, maybe 215, 220 when it first, before the, uh, the thermostat opened, but that's not a big deal. So again, I'm gonna try to install the hood today or tomorrow. And I just wanted to give you a, a quick overview of this project and, um, Again, very happy, very, very happy with my uh, Champion uh, radiator. And, and, and again, for a few more bucks, I got the, the three row, which I think probably makes a difference as far as coolant flow versus the, uh, the two row, so, which you can get for about 200, I think, or maybe less than that. But anyway, that's it for now. And uh, stay tuned because um, there's more to come.
drive until it got to operating temperature, which happens to be now in the 190 to 200 range. So, if, you, if any of you is looking for, for an alternative, the 160 thermostat for the uh, for the 350 V8 is is an option, and it's actually listed as that as an alternate. So, check it out, and uh, that's it for now, guys. See you later. Bye.
175 to 200. That's the, uh, the range of difference between the water neck and the gauge reading. So you have about 25 degrees of difference there. So anyway, I thought that would be interesting and maybe helpful to some of you who are wondering how accurate your, uh, your readings inside the car may be. Alrighty, that's all for now. Catch you guys later. Bye.